Hi guys and welcome to another Diddy Theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignerTechTips.com. Well we've got another little CSS effect for you today with the Diddy Theme here. And it's a little button, when you click on it, it sort of bubbles. And takes you somewhere obviously, here's an example of it, click on it. Sort of shoots out those little bubbles here. And obviously you add a link so it takes you where you want to go. But that's a nice little effect. And we've got some code today provided by Noor Saud. Apologize if I got your name wrong there. They're actually using some SCSS instead of CSS. I'm going to convert mine to plain CSS. And there's a bit of JavaScript involved. And don't let all this coding put you off. Most of it's just copying and pasting. Really easy to do. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is go back to my site here. And let's get rid of this button here and we'll recreate it. So let's enable the Visual Builder. Okay, let's go down and I'm going to delete these buttons here. There's that one. And there's this one. And this one. And we didn't get rid of this one. We'll try again there. Okay, and I'm going to add a code module. A little black button to add a new module. Divi comes as standard with all the light gray ones, plenty enough to build just about any site. I'm going to use the code module for this today. Let's go over to our bubbly button code. And obviously I'll put this below the video for anybody who needs to use it. I'm going to copy the HTML here. Control C. Back to my code module. I'm going to paste it in there. And there it is. Not really exciting looking, but we haven't added any of the code to it yet. So it's not going to do a whole lot. Obviously put in what your button wants to say in the white writing there. Make sure don't clip off the pointy brackets there. Okay, now we've got to add some style. Like I say, this is SCSS. I want to convert it to just plain CSS. So I'm going to select it, Control A, Control C. I've got an SCSS to CSS converter right here. And I'll put this link below the video as well. Let me just refresh this. Let's just get rid of that code. And I'm going to paste the CSS in the left panel here. And it's converted it to regular CSS on the right hand panel here. So now I can control A over here and copy all of it. Control C to copy. We can go back to our little code module. I need to wrap it in some style tags to make this work today. So let's drop down. Left pointy bracket, the word style and right pointy bracket. And as soon as we close that opening tag there, it puts a closing one in and the only difference is it's got a forward slash. All closing tags have a forward slash in there. And between these two is where we can paste that code that we just copied. And there we are. We've got our little button there. It's not going to do anything when we click on it because we haven't added the JavaScript. So let's add the JavaScript just under the style there. The drop down a couple. And now we're going to open some script tags. And again, it's the same thing. Left pointy, the word script. And right pointy. And it puts a closer in there for you. Spread them out. And in between, we can put our bit of JavaScript that we've got over here. Here it is. And again, select all. Control A. Control C to copy. And we'll go back to our button. And pop it in between the script tags there. And there it is. That's pretty much all we need to do. But of course, it's a button, so you want it to go somewhere. And to make it go somewhere, let's go right back up to the top here, to our HTML. We need to wrap it in an anchor tag or a link. And to do that, I'll just zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing here. Just before the button pointy opening tag there, I want to open an anchor tag, which is left pointy bracket and A. Then href equals, and this is where the link's going to be. Open and close some inverted commas. Inside, you can put the link to wherever you want your button to go. So you can copy a URL. I'm just going to put a hashtag in there. 
to represent a link. Then after the inverted comma, put a right hand pointy bracket. And again, it's put a closing anchor tag. And what we need to do is take that closing anchor tag, control X to cut. And I'm gonna put it just after the closing button tag there. That way we're wrapping that whole button in, in the link. So any way you click on the button, it'll take them to whatever link you decide to put in there. So hopefully this should all work. Now we've got everything in there. Let's save our changes. Actually, before I exit the Visual Builder, that's a little too far down. I want it a bit closer to my blurb. So I'm just going to give it a little negative margin in the actual module itself. So I'm going to click on the cog, go back in the module, design, spacing, and margin at the top. I'm going to click the little arrow to give it a negative value, or you can just type it in. I'm going to say negative 100, jump it up about 100. Yeah, that's a bit better, a bit closer. So let's save everything and make sure this is going to work today. Exit the Visual Builder. And there's our little button. When I quick click on it, it sort of bubbles a bit. Jumping up the top there because I've got a hashtag in there to jump it to the top. But for instance, if we wanted it to come down to this section here, I think I gave this section ID of blurb. Let's enable the visual builder and take care of that. Okay. If I go into this section, I think I gave it an ID of blurb. Advanced CSS ID in classes. Yeah, it's called blurb. So if I go in here and change this link to hashtag blurb, because all CSS IDs and my CSS ID for that is blurb have to have a hashtag in front. And we save that now. That'll now scoot us down to this section right here. Okay, when I click on this now, it just takes us down to that little section right there. There we go, there's our little bubbly button. Now, a question that may arise is what if I don't want it pink? Or whatever color that is. It looks kind of pink to me. Well, there's quite a lot of instances of this color in the actual CSS or SCSS even so and it's that F0081. Now if we go to our little converter here we can copy this again control C and the best way to change this, because there's a lot of instances of that color, rather than go through and every time you see that color, change it. We can open a program like brackets, and I'll put this below as well. This program is absolutely free. I think they're stopping supporting it soon, but it still works great as a text editor. And let's get rid of what's here. Now I pasted in the new ones there. Here's that color. So I just want to grab one instance of it. And I'm going to hit Control H for find and replace. Or you can go to find and replace down the bottom there. And you can replace it with the color we want. Let's change it to perhaps the light blue color of the logo right there. I'll just get that. I've got a free color picker right here. I'll copy that, go back to our brackets, and it's a hex code, hashtag, now that number that we just copied, and I want to replace all instances of this with this. There we go. Now if I copy this, Control A to select all, Control C to copy, we can replace the CSS in our little module right here. And I think we'll find there's one more color for a drop shadow or a box shadow that we need to replace. So let's enable the visual builder. Let's go into our little button again. And we want to grab all of this style right here. So underneath our style tag from body all the way down to our other style tag at the bottom there, we can delete that. 
Control V, we can paste in our new code. And now we've got that light blue button. But it looks like it's got a little pink outline still for some box shadow. So we can replace that with our blue too. If we roll down here, it'll actually show us where that color is because any colors, there it is right there, pop out in that pink. So we need to replace this color. Make sure we just get that hex code. I don't want to replace it with uh, this whole CSS right here. And we'll replace this with that hex code. And we'll also replace this one right here. We can just click on it and we'll find a blue for it. Just left click on it. It'll bring up the color palette right here. Give it something like that perhaps. That's fine because it's got a, an opacity to it. So it's not a hex color, but that's fine. And that should be it. If we scroll up and don't see any more pinks on there. Oh, here's a pink. As long as we give it something similar blue, it'll be absolutely fine. There we are, we're done. So let's save this. Save the page changes. Exit the Visual Builder. And we've now got a blue button with some blue bubbles. There we go. Like I say, Brackets is absolutely free. That's what I've used for this. I just copied the CSS, put it in here, selected the color I wanted to replace, hit Control H, or you can go to find and replace down at the bottom here and it does the same thing. Pop your new color in there, replace all, and replace your CSS, and that's you've changed your color effectively. So there you have it, guys. There's how to create a little bubble button. And of course, if you want once you've done one, all you need to do is copy it or save it to your library. You can put it in wherever you want and just change the URL for the link. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please ring the bell, give it a thumbs up, comment, share, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.